I have ranked many things in RimWorld, from weapons, to armor, to biomes, to many many things, but what I really wanted to rank for a while now is the mental break rush that colonists can get, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. Basically, I'm gonna be ranking them on how good or how bad these can be, how easy they are to deal with, how annoying they can be, and how hard they're gonna hit your colony. So. Let's start. First on the list, we have Berserk. Berserk, no matter what happens, you kind of have to intervene. And no matter how this goes, people are going to get hurt. Either the person that is going Berserk, or the people that are trying to stop him, or everybody. Which means that some people are going to be spending some time in the hospital. Of course, in extreme, extreme ways, people can even die, but that is rarely going to happen. Still. People are going to be injured, which means last time actually working, and that makes this break risk pretty damn bad. Even worse, it can be if you have a visiting caravan or something like that, and your person goes berserk, and they're just going to unload on him and shoot him. So berserk is definitely one of the worst breaks that can happen. We're going to put it into C tier. Next on the list, we have Catatonic. I absolutely hate this break risk. It is one of the worst out there. Why? Your person just drops on the ground, goes to sleep, and is absolutely useless for ages. It's not gonna do anything. This is even worse if that person is one of your more important colonists. Maybe your best researcher, or the person that was supposed to build, I don't know, a geothermal generator, and now you don't have anybody that is uh, good enough at construction to do that. It's really annoying. Not only that, but your doctor is gonna have to spend time feeding him, wasting his own time as well with that. And the Catatonia can really last a long time. I hate it. It's one of the most annoying ones. We're gonna put it into F tier. Next on the list, we have Corpse Obsession. This one is really not that bad. I never really minded Corpse Obsession. It just, you know, you're, the person's gonna drop a dead body, usually in a dining room or somewhere where there's a lot of people around. And sure, some people might see it and get the debuff of seeing a rotten corpse, but you know what? In my colony, people get to see that a lot usually because there's always enemies that attack and get to rot. So Corpse Obsession never was a thing that I worried about too much. It's at best, or at worst, it's a slight annoyance. So out of all of these, I'm gonna put this into S tier. Next we have Food Binge. Food Binge is a peaceful break, really not an issue break. Person is just gonna go and eat. You know what? At least they're not gonna be starving after they're done with their break risk. So that's definitely a positive. This is only a problem if your colony is like really, really, really low on food and you're struggling with that. But once you know a bit more about RimWorld, that's usually never gonna happen to you anymore. Unless you're in like a ice sheet or sea ice biome. <laughs> there it could be a bit more of a problem. But food binges, I, I welcome them. You know, out of all the breaks that can happen, if a person goes on a food binge, I'm like, sure. Have fun. We're gonna put this into A tier. Next we have Fire Starting Spree. This one is annoying sometimes. You know, it, it really, really, really depends. Usually your base really shouldn't be built out of flammable materials anyway, but in vanilla game, metals burn as well. So <laughs> it's always, there's, there's always something flammable, right? But usually all you need to do is grab a colonist, and follow that person around and just put fires out instantly. This can be a problem if you're busy doing something else, like there's somebody raiding you or something like that, then this could become quite a big of a problem. But most of the time, this is a uh, thing that you can just deal with, with relative ease. But there are occasions when it can be really problematic. So I think it's somewhere like in the middle of the pack. We're gonna put it straight up into B tier. All right, given up, and leaving this look in my opinion the person the colonist that does that the only thing they deserve is a bullet in the back of their head before they can actually leave that's my opinion now this is really one of the worst ones because this can happen to your best colonists and you lose your best colonists in such a stupid way to just decide to leave it's the worst. Of course, you can go and arrest them and shoot their kneecaps out and then try to get them back. 
you can do all of that but the problem can be what if they decide that when they're really close to the edge of the map and you can never even catch up to them it's really frustrating because it would make more sense hey you know i'm leaving i'll leave in like a day or like i'll leave in like five hours you know i'm just gonna pick up my stuff and then gonna leave that would give you a chance to really interact with us and try to fix it but sometimes they're just like oh i'm right next to the edge of the map you know what i'm leaving and he's gone the worst we're gonna put this into f tier next we have hide in a room this one is a peaceful chill break it's not hurting the person it's not hurting anyone else they're just gonna go in the room the rooms are usually in a safe place the rooms are usually either warm or cool enough that they're not gonna overheat or die from hypothermia sure they might get hungry but it's really the only thing hide in a room it's definitely an s tier break next we have two insulting sprees the first one, just on the regular insulting spree, person's just gonna go from one to another colonist and just, you know, tell them that their mother is a dirty, dirty something and their father smelt of elderberries or something like that. Anyway, the insulting spree are not too bad. The only time these can get really bad is if your overall mood in the colony is really, really low already, and then this could trigger multiple breaks. But that is rarely gonna happen. So Insultant Spree, just the basic one, is somewhere in, in between. We can put it into B tier. Now, targeted Insultant Spree can be much, much worse because it just goes against one person. And uh, that one person being insulted over and over and over again means it can stack to like minus 30 debuff, which, you know, even at the best, most chillest colonist, this can, this can really trigger another break and it could be really bad so we're gonna put this into c tier it's not like f tier material but i think it's it's down there in the c tier because it can trigger another break and if that another break is another insulting spree it just goes on or maybe the person goes berserk and starts fighting the person who insulted and then they both end in a hospital so you have to spend time healing them and then they spend time healing themselves and nothing gets done Next on the list we have Jailbreaker. Jailbreaker can be really annoying if you have a lot of prisoners in the same room. If you have like each prisoner has its own room, then it's not that big of a deal. If you have one big prison, which I tend to usually have, then this could be a problem. Now that being said, it's a problem because usually the prisoners are the ones that get hurt and there might be some very valuable prisoners that you were hoping to recruit. So you spend like a month recruiting this prisoner and then they escape and they get shot in the head. <laughs> and then they're just a corpse which could be a slight problem as you can see so jailbreakers can be really really annoying like even your people might get hurt which means that they're gonna have to spend time in the hospital healing up not doing anything else so jailbreaker pretty uh pretty bad break we're gonna put it in the seat here then we have murderous rage this is pretty similar to berserk but it can be worse because people there's a higher chance somebody gets hit, killed now because the pawn is gonna try to kill another pawn so the best thing you can do is take that pawn run as far away as possible and then use some of your other colonists to punch the the first one that wants to go and murder him which usually leads to berserk which then leads to people getting hurt the the one that instigated the whole thing and the people who tried to stop him so people end up being in the hospital and you know it's never good so pretty pretty bad break i think it's below berserker rage next we have psychotic wandering or as it's known a daze a colonist will go into a daze and just wander around being a stupid person this can be a problem if they do that far away outside of your base where they can be uh, hit by enemies either raiders or hungry animals or they can succumb to bad temperatures overheating or hypothermia it can be a big problem but if they break inside of your base then it's not a problem so once again it's one of those in-between breaks 
The good thing is you can usually arrest them with ease if they are really in danger and you can save them. But, you know, it takes some time. You have to use the person to do that. And it's definitely not one of the best breaks. I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle. We're going to put it here in the B tier. Next, we have Sad Wander. This one is pretty much the same as a Days, but it usually lasts a shorter amount of time. Pretty much everything goes the same you know if they're outside the enemies can get them so you have to arrest them and bring them back in if they're in danger but the good thing it does last a shorter amount of time so there's a good chance that they will recover on their own before you even need to go out there and do something about it so once again somewhere in the middle of the pack we'll put it in up here into b tier but it's better than days let's say next on the list is run wild oh Boy, do I hate that one. <laughs> I I do hate it. It's almost as bad as giving up, but this time around, at least the colonist stays on the map. That would be good, you say, but there's a couple of things over here. If you don't have anybody who can actually tame an animal, if you don't have anybody that's good with animals, it's really never a skill that I personally prioritize. It can be a big deal because you just won't be able to get that person back in. And, uh, you know, if this happens to one of your best colonists, you're kind of screwed. Not even that, that person that's now running wild is going to strip up all of their uh, equipment, which means he might get hypothermic, he might get hyperthermic, he's going to step on your traps and get hurt, he's going to try hunting squirrels for food and going to get scratched and then infected because he's going to be doing a really bad job at healing themselves. So yeah, you can see how things keep on stacking up. And even if you have somebody that's good at taming animals, it doesn't mean that it's going to just succeed in the first try. It might not succeed in the first try, it might not succeed in the second try, and by that time that person might be dead. I hate Run Wild, it's one of the worst ones. It's still better than giving up, but it's definitely bad. Next on the list we have Sadistic Rage. This one is similar to Berserk and Murderous Rage, but this time around they're going to go hit prisoners. I usually don't really have an issue with that, there's gonna beat up prisoners. It can happen that a prisoner dies, which could be a big problem if they're a very valuable prison, but otherwise it's really just teaching them a lesson, so they should be obedient and not try to escape the jail, and if it's one of those prisoners you are keeping to <clears throat> um, get some new organs from, then really not that big of an issue now is it? So Sadistic Rage, I usually don't even try to stop my people. Sure, it's gonna it's gonna probably get some people hurt, not just prisoners, maybe even your colonists. So that could be a problem, but I think it's much better than uh, Berserk or Murderous Raid. So somewhere in the middle of the pack, we're gonna put it out here into B tier. Okay, Slaughterer. Hear me out on this one. I hate it. You're the worst piece of something, something, if you go and kill an innocent animal that is there and it trusts you, you know, it comes to nuzzle you and then you slit its throat. That is, that is evil. That is beyond evil. Slaughterer is the worst. I don't care if it kills my pet rat or my chicken number 420. I don't care. Slaughterer is the worst and I hate colonists that break and do that. Like, I absolutely hate them. Okay? Now, the problem is, if you, if you have a pet thrombo that you took so much time to get there and make sure that they are combat ready, that they are actually obedient and listening to you, and then that person goes and slaughters it. Oh, oh man, that hurts. That hurts a lot. The biggest problem here is that you might not be close enough to stop it, right? He might break and the animal is just like right there, right next to him. It just goes, oh, boom, dead. There's nothing you can do. And that is the one of the worst the worst breaks where there is nothing you can do to stop it in certain situations. There is nothing you can do. Of course, you could try preventing it previously, but you know, sometimes that cannot be done to absolutely prevent breaks. So Slaughter, one of the worst, we're gonna put it out here into F tier. Leaving the horrible slaughterers behind, we have a social drug binge next. You know what I say about social drug binge? Let them enjoy it. My colonies are always full of drugs and I let the people enjoy it, keep their moods up. Sure, it might affect how fast they work on some stuff if they are constantly high, but I don't really see that as a problem because the mood buffs are good. 
from all of that. So if you want to go on a social drug binge, to me, that is almost the same as a food binge, right? But the food binge might mean that you run out of food if you're low on that. Running out of drugs when you're in social drug binge, that is not that big of a deal, is it? So it's even better. As I said, let them enjoy it. This is S tier. Now you would say, okay, but when you go on a hard drug binge, that can be a real problem because people might overdose and <laughs> overdosing is usually not good now, is it? But still, I say let them enjoy it. If they really need to, go for it. Overdoses are usually pretty easy to deal with. Sure, your calmness might drop and have to spend time in the hospital, but they usually don't have like cuts and bruises and missing arms and stuff like that that can happen from all these berserks and murderous rages and jailbreakers and all those things. It usually does not lead to somebody being dead. Just maybe brain dead, which can be fixed, right? I don't think drug binges are all that bad. I don't consider drugs in real world to even be bad. YouTube is probably gonna censor me now and demonetize, but you know what? I'm putting this into A tier. Then, last but not least, we have three different tantrums. Let's go first with the normal tantrum. Person is just gonna run around and hit random things. This is usually fine, unless they tend to smash some things that are already low on HP, which could lead to you missing out on some resources, but it usually does not lead to anything too bad. Of course, they might destroy some power conduits and, you know, that might mean to that there's going to be a break in power, but, you know, that's usually easily repaired. If they do destroy an item, it probably wasn't very uh, high quality in the first place, although some items do have low HP, but, you know, tantrums usually tend to be not too bad, just the normal ones. So we're going to put this out here in the middle into B tier. Now... Targeted tantrum can be really, really bad. It does depend on what kind of item they go for. If they go for your stack of advanced components and you're not close enough to stop them, <laughs> that can be a real issue. Of course, if you pick up those advanced components, they're going to start fighting or destroying something else, which could be, I don't know, your 17th... Uh, duster that you're trying to sell and it's poor quality which then sure go destroy it nothing bad's gonna happen but if they do get to those advanced components it's really bad it's even worse if they get to your camp fuel storage or maybe they get to your mortar shells and then the whole colony blows up you know that's fun i had colonists deleted from that there was nothing that remained of them <laughs> when they went for uh, some more uh, modded tactical nukes. Yeah. And there was nothing to do that I could do to stop them because they were right next to that thing. So in my opinion, targeted tantrum can be really, really bad. We're going to put it out here into F tier. And then last but not least, we have tantrum in the room. That one I usually do not worry about, do not bother even trying to stop it because they're gonna just destroy stuff in their own room. Bedrooms usually do not have too much valuable stuff. Sure, there can be some art, but I mean, art usually is made out of tough stone that has quite a lot of HP. So they'll never really break it completely. And if they're really close to breaking it, you can also uninstall it or they might break your golden royal bed, which would lead you to lose some gold. But if you're building royal beds at that point, you probably have gold to spend. So it should be easy to repair. So I'm going to put the tantrum in the room up here into a tier. And that concludes the whole ranking. Let me know if you agree in some of these ranks or which ones do you disagree on. Let me know what would you put into S tier, what would you put down in the F tier, and uh, what is the break that you personally hate the most. For now, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.